I can get you one. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name is Mike. Welcome to Pints and Paperbacks. Today, I'm going to talk to you about 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. I mean, I don't know if this really needs an introduction. I'm sure everybody has at least heard of the movie, if not seen it. But it's got this excellent foreword at the very beginning, written by Arthur C. Clarke afterwards, called Back to 2001. And it gives some really, really interesting insight. Like, I actually didn't know that the movie wasn't an adaptation of the book. They were written simultaneously, the script in the movie, which I thought was very interesting. Um, I guess Stanley Kubrick sought out a sci-fi writer to help him come up with his next movie, and they decided to also make a novel of it because the script is very difficult to write, but having a novel as well was would make it easier, but the novel actually didn't come out until after the movie came out. But if you if you pick this up today, I would definitely try to find one that has the foreword. I imagine any bookstore would would be selling one with the foreword in it. <clears throat> but if you're going to like a used bookstore, you might get an older copy. So I don't know if I need to preface this with a spoiler warning since the story as a whole is so well known. I mean, if you haven't seen 2001, watch the movie, read the book, either way, you'll get the story. I would say watch the movie. We'll get more into that though. But, <clears throat> spoiler warning, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to keep this story secret for you. So, the book starts off, and you're following this kind of group of monkeys as they, it's, it's like the predecessor to man. And you literally see them evolve from ape to man. And it was really interesting. And it's through the intervention of aliens. And I had forgotten that this story was really about aliens. It's a first contact story. In my memory, the movie is really just about Hal and the men on the spaceship. So it was really just a crazy AI and people stuck with it on a spaceship. But really, the heart of the story is kind of a first contact and an exploration into extraterrestrials, which I thought was really interesting. I, <clears throat> I wasn't really expecting that. So, you've got the beginning bit, it's maybe five chapters of following these monkeys as they evolve into man through the intervention of aliens. And it goes way more in depth than the movie does and kind of makes more sense. It's less uh, cryptic and esoteric and kind of more gets to the science of things as much as it can. And then the story moves ahead millions of years into uh, kind of present day. So the story was written in the 60s before the moon landing, but it takes place in 2001. And looking at Clark's vision of the future was very interesting. It was kind of shockingly accurate in a lot of his predictions, considering the time period when it was written. For instance, he... In, he predicted that in 2001, the Earth's population would be 6 billion, and this would cause a massive epidemic of overpopulation and food shortages. And through this, he even predicted the child limit law in China. Specifically, the law was in China. And the earlier stuff has got a lot of Cold War vibes, like the Soviet Union still exists. It was, it was interesting. He also predicted things like the 24-hour news cycle that we have nowadays. At one point, one of the characters is reading what's pretty much 
an iPad, but it was specifically designated to news. It was like a digital newspaper, but it was an iPad. And I always think it's kind of funny to see sci-fi authors' predictions pre-internet. So what happens is people find a monolith on the moon and it was buried. And when they open it and it touches sunlight, they realize that this monolith was almost like an alarm device placed by the aliens. And when the monolith touches sunlight, it sends out the signal deep into the solar system and deeper into space, <clears throat> kind of alerting the aliens that the apes that they had evolved into man had now become so advanced that they could get to the moon and unearth uh, the monolith that they had placed there. Then you kind of jump forward into basically what is the bulk of the novel, which is this group of men on a spacecraft that is traveling to one of the moons of Saturn, which is where they have found that the signal is going to. And that's also when you're introduced to HAL 9000. HAL scares the shit out of me. I spend way too much time worrying about AI, more than, more than is probably healthy. Um, <clears throat> and Clark did an AI gone rogue pretty well in this book, and I don't know, it's, it's scary. It's actually kind of interesting because the method that Clark describes in the novel of generating AI is still considered as a possible avenue into machine intelligence today. I read uh, Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom and he actually goes into the method that Clark talks about which is kind of like scanning human brains and trying to replicate the neural networks of the human mind and basically uploading a human mind into a into a computer and using that as a method of generating general machine intelligence of a human level. But yeah, how scares the shit out of me. Like the science that Clark brings to the table is very, very interesting, but the characters are two-dimensional. Calling them, calling them two-dimensional is almost a compliment. They, my niece, my three-year-old niece, could draw a stick figure and be like, that's mommy. And that would have more depth than the characters that Clark creates. And I'm not just being hyperbolic here. I mean, the, the three-year-old's drawing of mommy has so much more history and meaning to it than than the characters. It had the characters have no opinions, they have no history. They're practically non-existent. And that was a big drawback for the story. Which kind of sucks because I'm mostly a character person, so if the characters aren't good, then I'm really not into it. Even if I don't like the setting or genre, if the characters are great, I can dig it. But this book had such a great adventure in it, and the enthusiasm with which Clark explains his prophetic visions of future technology in the short length of the novel made this pretty easy to read. The lack of character did have one strange effect, especially with Bowman, who you spend the majority of the novel with. I, I kind of got this effect that some video game designers intend with, like in The Legend of Zelda, uh, the silent protagonist. He's got no character, so you end up kind of replacing him with yourself, which was interesting, kind of unnerving at times because He's so isolated, but honestly, I would just prefer to have actual characters in my book, not a blank slate silent protagonist. Clark does do a good job of describing the feeling of isolation that you would have so far from humanity as the ship goes 
out into the solar system further and further away from Earth. Parts of it kind of reminded me of the movie Alien. And when the shit hit the fan, it actually was a little bit scary. But the impact was lessened by the lack of characters. Honestly, the brevity of the book worked in its favor. And I think it's probably best read quickly. Because when I set the book down, there was no character that I was thinking about and wanted to come back to. Like, when I read King, or even when I was reading the Stormlight Archive, or really anything that's up there in page count close to the thousand mark, it's the characters that keep me coming back. And I'm thinking about the book when I'm not reading it. And if this book was much longer than it was, I probably would not have finished it. Because there was no one to care about. So the lack of characters kind of sucks. But, much like Asimov's writing, Clark's novel shows such a love of science and the future possibilities of humanity that it's alluring, at least in that regard. It's a love letter to our endless potential if we focused on a unified effort of technological progress and our innate desire to explore the farthest reaches possible, both in the physical world and in the world of knowledge and understanding. But also to explore ourselves and our place in the universe. To go where no man has ventured before and to see what there is waiting for us. The final chapters of the book were very Lovecraftian, kind of drawing from Lovecraft's cosmic horror, but they were also kind of like a acid trip, Philip K. Dick, weird, weird, weird sci-fi. It was an interesting take on the whole Lovecraft at the Mountains of Madness idea, like thesis that aliens started the human race, but it's been done before, it's been done better. And Prometheus is another one that kind of floats the same thesis, but it's, it's seen, it's seen in other stuff. Lovecraft did it better. So, my final thoughts on this book. It's short, and it's easy to read. And considering the time period in which it was written, Clark brings some really interesting ideas to the tape. The bad trip psychedelic ending was pretty awesome, but it would have been much more impactful were there actual characters involved in it. And if the reader had any kind of emotional investment in them, it would have been so much better. The whole book would have been better. All the drastic situations would have been better with some emotional investment with actual characters instead of two-dimensional stick figures. I actually did kind of a hybrid. I read the, I listened to the audiobook and read the book, and I have to say that the audiobook was actually uh, fantastic really good quality, a good narrator, and had like special effects when people were communicating over radio and especially the bits where Hal was talking were really well done and reminiscent of the, the movie and the amazing quality in the movie. So if you're an audiobook person, I recommend it. If you like sci-fi, I would still recommend it just because it's so short. You could really read it in one sitting, probably five hours. The audiobook is six hours, so it doesn't take very long to read. If it was much longer, I might not recommend it. Now, I really want to read like a space horror. Like, I want like a, I want like a, a 700 page Stephen King novel written with just Bowman and Hal stuck in between Jupiter and Saturn 
and I want to see what the hell that would be about. If you have, if you, if you know of a book like that, please comment. Anyways, it's an okay book. It's got no characters, but Clark has like a Nostradamus level of prophetic vision of the future of technology. Three out of five. Like, comment, and subscribe.